Good morning and happy Tuesday, parents. Thank you so much for joining us today. This is our second Mustang Connection of the year. We so relish this time uh, to, with you to have that opportunity to share with you some of the amazing things that are happening in our high school. And today we absolutely have a stellar lineup of young people uh, who are going to share the work that they are doing every day here in school um, to make our community a more safe and inclusive and welcoming place. Um, so um, just as a way of introduction, since I missed you last month, uh, my name is Amy Zubermihan. My pronouns are she, her, and I am very honored to serve as the high school principal. I'm in my second year here at ASIJ. Um, and then enjoying the second year um, as much, if not more than last year, as I get to know more of our students and members of our community. Um, also joining me on the call today is Dr. Brad Augustine. You want to do a little intro, Brad? Sure. Thanks, Amy. Hi, everyone. My name is Brad Augustine. I go by he, him, and this is my uh, third year here at ASIJ. Um, wonderful to be here as the high school associate principal. And uh, really excited to have some of our students with us today. So nice to see everyone. Nice to talk to everyone. <laughs> um, and with that, we do have some students joining us today. I'd like to welcome them to um, unmute and introduce themselves. Maybe tell us your name and your grade level. And let's start with the screen that has Relly on it. Hi, I'm Hannah. My pronouns are she, her. Hi, I'm Relly. My pronouns are she, her. And we are both seniors. Ella, why don't we go with you next? Hi, I'm um, Ella, I'm a senior, and my pronouns are she, her. Hi, everyone. I'm Cecile. I'm also a senior, and I also use she, her pronouns. Hi, I'm Malin. I'm a senior as well, and I also go by she, her pronouns. Thank you so much, students. Um, the young people that we have with us today, as I said, are, are doing a lot of the work to really help us. Um, this week is Ally Week, which we'll talk about in a little bit more, to create that safe space. Um, so our plan today is we've just introduced who's on the call and thank you to all of our parents who are joining us as well. Our guiding question today really uh, does come from, as we, as we wrote in the Mustang Bulletin, um, some feedback and some of the themes that we heard from a recent trip that myself and Scott Wilcox and Bob Nodden took to the East Coast of the United States. We were visiting some of our college and university partners. And while we did that work, we took the opportunity to meet with um, some of our young people, our young alum, mostly young alum who had graduated from ASIJ within the last five years or so. We also attended two amazing alumni events and a big shout out to our alumni office for organizing those for us. It was wonderful to connect with folks who hold ASIJ near and dear to our hearts. Um, and we, they absolutely, um, I put a picture of coffee here because every time we would meet with our young alumni, we'd say, where would you like to meet for coffee? And they always had the best choices. Leave it to college students to pick really good food um, and <laughs> delicious coffee in really fun neighborhoods of the places we were visiting. Um, but I would say that, you know, the feedback that we received from our young alum was very positive. We, we asked them, you know, tell us about your ASIJ experience, what went well, and what would make it even better if. And we did hear from our young people that they felt very much like um, the teachers and faculty at ASIJ cared about them. They felt very much like the relationships and friendships that they formed at ASIJ. They were still in touch with many of them and that, that kind of uh, gave them a wonderful foundation as they moved into college. The co-curricular opportunities they had here, they felt like they'd had that opportunity to collaborate and take on leadership roles. And many of them said that academically too, of course, they felt very prepared for the, the college experience. When we asked them what would make ASIJ better, one of the big themes that came out um, and that I was so appreciative that our alum, young alum shared so openly and vulnerably was that many of them shared that themselves or some of their friends didn't always feel like they could be their true authentic selves at ASIJ. That there was um, at times they felt like they didn't fit in um, because their identities, especially if they were members of the LGBTQ plus community, were not always um, a safe space to be truly who they who they are. Uh, and, you know, the work we're doing at ASIJ, I was, I was really thankful they shared that with us because we are committed to making sure that everybody in our community, our students, our faculty, our staff, our parents, 
they have that opportunity to be seen and heard and honored and valued and supportive as their authentic selves. Because we know that when each person truly belongs and they can safely um, share their identity, we all benefit. It is wonderful for our entire community as we form those human connections, when we better understand our diverse complex world, it, it makes us stronger as a community. And so we wanted to um, focus this month's Mustang Connection really on that feedback we heard from alumni. So many of them said, yes, great experience. It would be even better if, and they asked what has ASIJ been doing over the past few years? We really hope it's a different experience than when we ourselves were attending ASIJ's high school. And fortuitously, we did not plan to have our second Mustang connection during Ally Week here in the high school, though I think it's something we should think about as we go forward every year to get these updates. Um, it is Ally Week here in the high school, and if you are on campus this week, I'd encourage you to come by and see some of the incredible work that's happening um, from our student leaders, our students who are the ones that are helping us to learn and grow in the space of what it means to be an ally, and our student leaders who are advocating um, to create that more welcoming and safe space for every member of our community. And so we've invited um, some phenomenal members of our um, Gender Sexuality Alliance today to help us um, unpack how is the high school working to ensure our community is that inclusive and welcoming space. Um, emphasis on working too. We know um, in many ways uh, we've made that progress and there's still ways to go. And so I wanted to have them um, share their voice and their experiences of the work that they're doing today. So with that, um, I'm going to turn it over to the stars of the show, which is our Gender Sexuality Alliance students for the front portion of today's Mustang Connect. They um, actually are going to be leaving the call midway through because they're off to support our advisory program, which they can talk a little bit more about in a minute. But I'm going to turn it over um, to the team. Take it away. Thank you for that introduction. So we are the GSA, uh, Gender Sexuality Alliance. And we are largely a student-led club, uh, with leaders this year being myself, Ella Rolf, and Mia Hamaguchi, who was unable to make it today, but really wishes she could have been here. And so at school, our mission is to create and foster a safe environment for members of the LGBTQIA plus community, as well as allies. Um, and this oftentimes comes in the form of education, spreading awareness and the concept of allyship, and encouraging compassion at school. So today we'll be giving a bit of a rundown on our current projects in the high school, which are in areas of advocacy and awareness, building school facilities, improving the school's technology to better reflect inclusivity, as well as uh, encouraging education through our own ASIJ curriculums. So we'll be touching on all of these projects and explaining a bit more about them. And so without further ado, Relly and Hannah are going to explain a bit about Ally Week and what we've been doing for advocacy that way. Okay, so hi, um, I'd like to begin by saying again, happy Ally Week. Um, Ally Week is an international youth-led advocacy campaign to showcase support, or better put, allyship for members of the LGBTQIA plus community. So Ally Week provides a space for non-LGBTQ plus people to be educated about LGBTQ plus communities and issues. And it's also a very important time where LGBTQ plus students can feel seen and respected and feel safe within their community. And as long as I've been here, ASIJ has always celebrated Ally Week in November. And this year we put together something that's never been done before, which is an art display. Um, Ms. CM, could you go to the next slide? Oh yeah. So could you go to the next slide? <laughs> okay, so here are some photos of the process of putting this project together. And the mural, the wall showcases a beautiful collection of photographs from historical moments and figures of the gay rights movement, as well as artworks created by various LGBT plus artists, um, poetry, prose, lyrics by LGBT figures about their queer experiences, um, various pride flags that recognize and celebrate the many identities within the LGBT community, um, as well as student artwork from members of the GSA. So, uh, yeah, thank yeah. you. Okay, so these are all gathered and printed, cut, collaged by our GSA um, 
club and so it would be great if you guys could check it out if you ever come to school um, and look at all these small details that are incorporated by our students and it's really a gorgeous and celebratory collaborative piece and we are so proud of what we were able to put together and it's a statement that's really bold and beautiful and we've never really done anything like this in the DSA community and a lot of students have reached out and told us about how they felt really included and seen and felt like they were part of the community when they like engaged in this sort of artwork so that was a really cool experience and um, overall we've received like really wonderful like supportive feedback and encouragement from the community and we do hope that this allyship spirit will continue in coming years to enhance inclusivity within ASIJ and make strides to ensure that LGBT plus students uh, experience a safe school environment. So Cecile and I are going to talk about some other things the GSA has been doing to help the uh, community at school. So currently there's one, there's two gender neutral bathrooms at school. But at the end of last year, we only had one. And a conversation began with Ms. Zubermihan and some GSA members. But because these are bathrooms and actual facilities at school, it's really hard to change. But with the arrival of the new safeguarding uh, coordinator, Ms. De Leon, uh, we've been able to have some short-term solutions to help our community at school because there are various non-cisgendered people who need to use bathrooms at school because our campus is big, we need uh, a lot more accessibility. And so this slideshow will actually be shown to all students in the high school right after this meeting, um, where they'll learn who to contact if they're interested in knowing about the availability of these bathrooms. Um, and so they'll be able to learn what facilities have been opened for their needs. And so additionally, we've been working on some technology changes and updates for the school. Um, as the current technology situation stands, um, people aren't really able to reflect their identities in the ways that they'd like to. So with these new changes, students will be able to confirm and also alter their personal information. So this includes not just um, changing names to better reflect your identity, but including heritage names, nicknames, different last names, depending on familial situations. And so it really broadens up the inclusivity of technology. And there are different options for where these names or personal information changes will materialize. So there, there are options for those name changes materializing on official school documents like transcripts and report cards, but also in areas like class rosters and email addresses that are more within the school community. Okay, so I'm going to be talking about the changes that GSA has been working with the health teachers to change in the health program. So at the moment, uh, we've just kind of started initiating this, but we have a document of resources for the health teachers and the students in the classes that helps them educate themselves and their classes uh, more on same-sex sexual health, as well as resources that help students who might be exploring different sexualities or different gender identities to educate themselves better on what those mean and helping them find what resonates with them. It's also important for students who might not identify with um, these issues, but for them to be educated on these topics for better allyship, especially in Ally Week, I think it's important to recognize that everybody needs to be educated on different situations and different genders and sexuality so they know uh, what their peers, friends, or family members might be uh, dealing with. Uh, it's also really um, important for the GSA and something we feel very strongly about is incorporating more transgender health into the health program, not just as sort of an option, but as sort of a, a lesson, because there are trans students at school, and there, there are many unsafe um, practices promoted in certain areas, and I think it's really important that we support trans students uh, in healthy ways of dealing with their identities. So I think um, you can hear from our young people here just how much um, work uh, and care and thoughtfulness is going into ensuring from these young people that their classmates and their peers feel like they can take those steps to be their authentic selves here on campus. Um, what we do want to offer up um, an opportunity over the next few minutes, if any of our parents have a question about the work um, about that any of our young people are doing, to please pop that into the chat. 
Um, Dr. A will will be checking out questions there, um, and is we're we're very happy to take them. And the friends on the call today are very happy to take your questions. Um, in the meantime, as we wait to see if there's any questions coming up. Um, I'm wondering if you might share with us a little bit about what's going to be happening in advisory this week. Um, at 11 o'clock, all of our students will go to their Tuesday advisory session, and we'll be going through some lessons this week that are um, have been spearheaded and planned and put together by our GSA team. And so maybe you could just share with us um, what um, the, the big purpose, the big why behind these these lessons are, and what you're really hopeful for. And parents, we're going to give you a chance to, to practice um, your own advisory lesson in a little bit. But before these folks jump off the call, tell us a little bit about what's in store for, for Ally Week Advisory. Okay, so the Ally Week Advisory Project is something that we do annually every Ally Week. And we essentially get two blocks of advisory periods on Tuesdays and Thursdays to essentially do any project we want relating to Ally Week. And what we chose to do was to give students and faculty an, uh, an opportunity to reflect on whether or not they're being upstanders and whether or not they're being allies to the community. So the way we decided to do this is through a series of thought-provoking videos and scenarios. And so the videos, we watch them together in advisory groups, and then there are some discussion questions that lead to group reflection and discussion. And then we go through scenarios together. And these scenarios put students and faculty directly in the shoes of someone who's experiencing a situation in which they might not know what to do or action is required or um, recommended. So we have example scenarios about what to do when you're interacting with someone new for the first time and you're unsure of how to introduce yourself, how to ask for pronouns. Um, we have situations like if you're on the bus and you're a bus monitor or just a bus rider, what would you do if um, there were some inappropriate comments made or homophobic comments made. And so these situations, we walk through them together, intending to offer students a chance to reflect and develop their ideas about what it means to be an ally at the school and beyond. And certainly we hope that allies and allyship does not just happen during ally week, right? I think as you were saying, Cecile, that this becomes a part of the culture here in the high school of being those upstanders for each other. Um, where, if let's take a minute here from any of you, five years out, you're all seniors this year, right? You're all seniors um, leaving us at the end of the year. Um, what are your hopes if you came back to visit ASIJ in a few years time, what would some of the things that um, are happening here, um, the culture here, practices here, um, what would be your hopes to see that we really have lived up to being that diverse, equitable, inclusive community of allies? Um, well, I have a little sister who's a freshman this year. So I hope, you know, in around that time, four or five years that I could see for myself some changes. But currently at school, there are numerous teachers who have, uh, uh, who show their support of being allies, like throughout the year, not just during Ally Week, but, but throughout the year, having just small posters or pins like in their classrooms, which really open it up. But I think in some time, um, having more students maybe showing their work like this mural we've been making, um, having that not just during Ally Week, but having more artwork or student self-expression uh, that doesn't last just one week, but throughout the year, throughout high school, um, seeing more of students express themselves would be really nice. Others on the call, things you're hopeful for that you would, yeah, go for it. Um, I think one thing is a lot of this allyship being reflected in like the curriculum. So I think Ella talked about this too, but I feel like there's a lack of like not mandatory, but sort of this sense of including LGBTQ plus issues into something that everyone kind of has to learn about, that makes sense. So I think that's one big aspect because I feel like generally people are pretty supportive in our school, but I think seeing that sort of materialized into school material could be really nice. I would also say, I hope this like celebratory spirit of Ally Week um, from members of the GSA, like I hope this continues. I think um, the advisory lessons are 
a great thing that we've done the past couple of years, but it's different to see all the colorful flags on the wall and it just feels so prideful and lovely. And I do hope just Ally Week in general, but also allyship in general continues to be um, an integral part of the SIJ student body and community. Um, I also hope that as the time goes on at ASIJ, that uh, talking about different pronouns or different gender identities or sexualities becomes less of like a, a hesitant thing and people are just more okay with being like, hey, my name's Ella, I use she, her pronouns, what are yours? Um, I think that's something that people are starting to get more comfortable doing uh, as sort of GSA is expanded, especially. Um, but I just hope people can be more, that it comes more commonly. Um, thank you all so much. And I know you have to get ready to go in the next couple of minutes to go and support our students in the allyship advisory pieces. Um, before you jump off the call and we we turn things over to our parents, I just really, really want to thank you for your advocacy, um, for your spirit, and for keeping the conversations alive and moving forward here at ASIJ. Um, I really wish, I hope, I may send to some of those alumni that I had that opportunity to connect with about a month ago, the work that's happening here. I think they would be amazed um, and really proud of the work that your, your group is doing. And again, to parents, if you can make it to campus this week, if you're out here, do come by and see the art installation. Um, there are incredible fine details and thought in this piece of work that so much more than art. It really is telling a story and um, inspiring that welcoming community piece. I mean, ask our artists, we have them here on the call, uh, a little bit about the, the, the kind of the deeper meaning behind several of those elements. Um, wouldn't you agree, Dr. A? It's pretty outstanding. We keep, we keep leaving our office to go out and have a look at it. <laughs> we do. I, I, you know, Amy and I have been in high schools for you know, 20 plus years, and we've seen incredible art exhibits. And this is one of the most powerful ones I've ever seen. You can just stand and look at all the different nuances of it. And um, the thought that went into it is incredible. And just a tremendous thank you to the team. And we love to hear a little bit about some of the, any details about the process you took or the approach you took to making it, because it's fantastic. Um, well, one of the things I did mention earlier was that the central piece um, is a painting that I did and over the past month and actually the words on it are uh, student staff testimonials about people's uh, LGBT experiences at ASIJ and beyond and um, they're really powerful words if you look closely you can read um, people's experiences and there's so there's so much vulnerability and it's so emotional and dense and captivating. And it's just, I think it's important that we appreciate people's vulnerabilities and it's it's incredible, like just all of it that we were able to put together. And um, in so many ways it's collaborative and it's a form of expression um, and it's, it's the GSA, it's the students and staff of our community. And I think it's important, so important to recognize that. And um, I would really appreciate it if um, parents too could stop by and look at all the words because they are handwritten um, by each of us, like all of us in the club, yeah. Thank you so much, Hannah. And I know you all have to go be on advisory uh, support now and um, thank you, thank you, um, parents. These are incredible change makers here in our community, helping us become that more welcoming and inclusive place every day. Um, and so thank you, friends, for being willing to share your work today. Um, and yeah, I'll uh, let you all jet off to where you need to go next as we move the parents who are on our call into an experience of what you're off to lead. <laughs> Are incredible young people. Um, just a joy to have the opportunity to work with uh, people, these young people each day who are making us better in our roles and we're learning from them um, all the time um, really about what that community can feel like when we're all having that collaborative welcoming space where everyone can be their authentic selves. 
So um, we want to just, we're going to share with you, um, as Cecile was mentioning with the advisory program coming up, they're off right now to um, meet. They're pairing up with different advisories for grade nine through 12, different lessons for different age groups. But today really is around what does it mean to be that upstander and what does it mean to be that ally that so many of our alumni were reflecting on as part of their experience here at ASIJ and hoping that we were growing in this space. And so there's a few um, scenarios that um, our young people have put together of actual scenarios that they themselves or peers have had um, experience with while here on campus. And so what they're asking their um, advisories that they're working with today to do is to read the scenario and then discuss their thoughts and answer the questions. So what we're going to do, we're going to create a couple of breakout rooms. I think we'll make two. Um, and we'll go through the scenarios and then we'll put them in the, the group chat as well so that you, they kind of pop into your group. And just take a moment or two to read the scenario and then think about how might you answer or approach this if it was you. So I'll go through the scenarios, then we'll go into the breakout groups. So the first one was, you're interacting with a new student and you're unsure of their gender identity. How would you or could you ask for their pronouns? The second scenario, a friend discloses to you that they identify as a member of the LGBTQ plus community, but are afraid to tell others out of fear of how they'll react or what they'll say. How would you respond and how do you support your friend? And the third scenario, you see someone making comments that are homophobic or transphobic in a group chat and nobody is speaking up. You're unsure whether this person realizes what they're saying is harmful. How would you respond to this situation? So let's just take about 10 minutes um, into uh, breakout rooms. And what we'll do is I'll send the, the prompts to um, your breakout room as a, as a message just to re-cue you on what those three are. I'll give you about two minutes for each. Thanks team, thanks for playing along um, and getting a little taste into what our students are working with today and working on today in advisory. Um, Dr. A, do you want to make share outs of just themes you heard in your room? Sure, thanks. I'm just going over some of my notes. So apologies, I'm looking down. I really want to thank Atsuko and Tamami and Erie. We had a great conversation. Um, I think in general, it's just the, the comments are, it's really great that ASIJ is committed to this and, and giving a forum for our students to have avenues to talk and to have um, our advisory program where it's an entire uh, approach to to giving um, avenues for kids to really explore these topics. Um, it's wonderful that our kids are having less bias. They're entering the world better prepared for the complex world of our future. We did talk about some of the complexities of being in Japan and some of the more um, traditional elements of that. And so our kids having to navigate some of the things they're learning here and then entering the Japanese community where it's a little um, less open to some of those things or it's still kind of on the journey and those kids have experienced more open situations than perhaps some of their friends who were at different schools and getting through that. Um, we talked about the many diverse issues beyond all of this that, that come into play um, and that, that can really lead to conflict. And so the kids learning how to handle those situations where there are diverse views that are different from theirs is really important. Our, our kids are talking about that right now upstairs about how to handle when there's that kind of situation. We talked a little bit also um, about, I think the parents were very glad that, that our kids are dealing with this because we didn't have a chance to do this when we were in high school. And um, our kids are so much farther ahead of us at this age and that that is a really important thing. Um, we also talked a bit about fear, you know, and the and the, the, the challenges of wanting to share something and the, what would you do as a parent or what would you do to an adult? And people shared I was really grateful to hear some of the personal stories they heard about friends who didn't know how to share their own journeys about their gender identity or their sexual identity and talking about always being open to being an avenue to just encourage your kids to talk, right? Like I'm no matter what, like, please come and talk and that this is a place um, to share and, and do your questioning. That's okay. Um, be patient with your kids and be patient with each other. Um, you know, find allies everywhere you can because you you want to never feel like you're alone in that process. And 
Um, we're just really grateful for the candid conversation that we had um, from our group. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. I think that's so important that theme is coming out in other groups too, right? Just that importance of keeping the conversation moving and going and being willing to engage in that conversation. And I think, you know, it was lovely to hear our young people speak this morning about the vulnerability um, and being able to say, you know, we're figuring it out together and it's having those conversations and the more we can do as a school and at home to create those safe spaces where you can have that vulnerability and you can be learning and grappling together, um, the more progress we will make to be that more welcoming and inclusive community. So, um, yeah, I'm really grateful for the conversations and the willingness to, to engage in those chats this morning of things that we all are working through as a school and as parents um, with our young people and taking our cues many times, as you said, Brad, from our young people who um, I admire when they're, they're letting us know um, how we can be better or when we misstep or things that we're doing really well um, so that we can keep doing more of the really good stuff too. So um, the kids, uh, when I was chatting with our students yesterday, they were really talking about wanting to build in that empathy in a, a, a the allyship week. And so, you know, the slides that you'll see now is after they're doing the the discussion and scenarios, they're they're saying, so do you see that in our community? And have you had this happen to you? And taking back the scenario to yourself, how did you react rather than how might you react or how would you react? And being in that space where you can share that. And now, if you were to go into another situation, having done some of the case studies, how might you react? And on Thursday, um, they're also collecting questions today from each of the advisories of questions they have as they navigate the nuances and complexities in the space and how to be better allies. They're collecting those questions up. And so um, they're also going to share out some of their scenarios of what, what could you do or should you do if you're unsure about asking for pronouns, for instance, and you can model it, right? You can say, hey, it's nice to meet you. My name is Amy and my pronouns are she, her, you know, what are yours? Um, and they're, they're giving like for kids who are, are wondering, like, how do I do that? Also giving it that space um, to, to say, here's some, here's some ways you could handle this. So some ways you could approach it. Um, the second scenario about a friend disclosing, thank your friend for trusting you. Thank your child for trusting you and remind them it takes a lot of courage to open up. Um, if your friends um, ensure them, if they've told you something very uh, much about their identity, it's their story to share, not yours. So reassuring them that you'll follow through that to keep their what they've shared with you just to them and not pressuring other people or your, your friend to tell other people. And if it's new for you, how can you find, how can you educate yourself to better support your friend? And the third one, if someone is making comments that are homophobic or transphobic, and you're not sure whether they realize what they're saying is hurtful, depending on the context and how well you know that person, um, there are some things you could do. You could talk to them or text them privately, explain why it's problematic. If it's in a larger group to context, gauge your response depending on your comfort level, um, and then act knowing that this language is not appropriate. And if you're still really uncomfortable, um, find someone um, in the community that is um, somebody who can help, um, whether that's a counselor, safeguarding coordinator, or another trusted adult or a teacher. So I really appreciate that they're you know, not just giving us these scenarios, they're also saying, here's ways that we can act to be those allies. And of course, um, it doesn't end at Ally Week, and it doesn't end um, simply with LGBTQ plus um, identities as well. Our commitment to DEI um, is it permeates all of what we're doing, and um, we want to share with you a little bit too about what we've been doing as a faculty and what we're doing with students when it comes to other aspects of ensuring that we're um, working toward being more inclusive. Um, we will, um, oh, before we will get to that, but the GSA team, I did share with them that I'd make sure that we included in this slide deck some of the resources they use and go to to support um, the learning of their peers and uh, to support the learning of our faculty. So here's some of those that we'll share out. And then, as I said, uh, we're really looking at this more broadly too. And Brad, I'll turn it over to you to talk a little bit just about some of the work we've been doing as a whole school. Yeah, it's an ongoing for all of us, and we use our breakout group, the, the notion of trying to escape the either or thinking or the binary thinking, the yes, no, on, off. It's a real continuum, and we're all, all of us in the community are trying to continue to grow and learn no matter where we are at that, at our place on this. And um, 
on October 26th when we had our recent PAC day, our focus was on diversity, equity, and inclusion, and we really zeroed in on belonging. Um, it continued some of the work we had done previously with Dr. Josephine Kim. She'd been with us. She's a Harvard professor. She's been with us a couple of times. Um, we've done various book reading and um, videos and and. Um, this day was, again, highlighting this notion around how can we continue to move forward with a better sense of belonging for all of our faculty members, all of our students on campus. Um, we gave students, uh, our teachers, a lot of different options that day. Um, we really didn't um, think, thought about, you know, what type of learning do you need at this time? We, we talked about this with our own students in classrooms about choice to meet the needs that we're all in different stages um, of our learning. And so if you look from this graphic, you can see uh, teachers had the option to choose any number of topics about um, things along biases, things, uh, choices around microaggressions. Um, how do I develop a sense of belonging from my students in my own classroom? Um, all of these topics around my intersectionality of my own identity, all of these topics then when you clicked on it had further um, videos or readings or um, uh, different podcasts that people could listen to. And then um, from here, we got back together as a group. We, have, we were in small groups and we talked about, you know, what are some of the things that are uh, challenging some of our preconceptions? What are some new learnings we're taking from these different resources? And kind of what's next? What questions do we have still from this? And so it ended up with really rich conversations. Uh, my group was diverse. I had members from um, across the campus. And it, we, we purposely put people in different groups to really have access to people that they don't typically get to work with. Um, and so it was a really uh, nice day to um, investigate all these topics to continue our own work, because um, we know this is really helpful for us as we engage with our students who have these very similar questions. So all of us are trying to do this lifting um, in our professional development time and for our students right now in their advisory lessons. So it's a little bit about the work we just most recently did um, on the 26th of October. Yeah. Thanks, Brad. And coming up um, at one of our upcoming PAC days, we're going to pick up this work, really digging into ensuring that sense of belonging in the classroom. Um, you know, if you've been attending Mustang Connections or parent events with Brad and myself at them, you'll know that we're both firm believers in the social emotional wellness of our young people and that it's very, very important that relationships come first and that our young people know that we care about them, we see them, we know them, we value them. And once we have that sense of belonging, then the learning becomes, you know, limitless. The sky's really the limit of what a young person can do when they know that they, they have trusted adults who believe in them. And so we'll be digging into that um, as long as, as well as, as we think through how are we approaching our curriculum, starting from that place of who are my students and how am I ensuring they belong um, to help them on that journey? So um, that's kind of the, the, we're at sort of the end of our presentation pieces right now. Um, our next Mustang Connection will be on Tuesday, December the 13th. Um, we're planning at this point to talk about uh, college and personal academic counseling at that uh, Mustang Connection. We're thinking about um, our structures that we have in place. We're looking for feedback on what's working really well in our counseling program. Where And just like we ask our alumni, where might we get even better? So be on the lookout for that. I also mentioned at the very start of today's Mustang Connection that I had the wonderful opportunity to visit the East Coast about a month ago um, to visit our college admissions partners alongside Scott Wilcox and Bob Nodden. We met with several universities that our students often matriculate to, to share the work that's happening across the school and specifically in the high school with deep learning, uh, knowing that our signature pro program will be coming online for the class of 2026. And so we do want to just let you know that there'll be a, a broader community opportunity for Scott and Bob and I to share out our findings at that. Um, we wanted to do something a little different than a Mustang connection to do that work. And we'll share out more of what we heard from our alumni at that too. Um, the big themes from our alum really being um, around how ASIJ prepared them well and that area of growth really thinking about how do we ensure that not everybody's just fitting in but everybody really has that sense of belonging. It can be themselves. So um, that's uh, where we are at the moment. What I'm going to do is um, thank you all for joining us. I'm going to pause 
the recording at this point. And if anyone has any questions, they want to stick around on the call and ask us any questions, we're here for the next few minutes. Uh, but we look forward to seeing lots of you in December. Thank you all very much.